You're now rocking with Kwame Braxton, aka Spook. This is Speak Your Peace TV. in the second grade I wrote my first lyric um I think I performed it for my dad he was like mm, you need to be rapping you need to go to school like, okay so I just put it down at that point but um I took it I really seriously got into it when I was about in the eighth grade there was a, a freestyle cypher going on and I had the I had like the second chance to, I had the second chance to get it but I fumbled it so when it came back around I actually did a little freestyle and everyone was like oh man he's cold so from then on I just used that to you know develop into what it is now. Uh, Rakim, first and foremost Rakim, um, simply because he's the one who changed the whole spectrum of how to spit. He's the one who introduced uh, internal rhyme scheme and he also did the, he also mastered the storytelling and everything. Next one will probably be Slick Rick, um, X-Clan, Public Enemy, and of course Karis One. Karis One is obviously because he's the first person that came up with philosophy inside of hip hop. He actually in, he, he implemented a, a deeper message as opposed to, you know, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. He actually told you about who you were before, you know, pre -colon, uh, colonized African Americans, pretty much. That's in currently. Uh, right now, I probably want to work with Kendrick Lamar. Definitely like to work with J. Cole, but as far as in the past though, I would probably want to get a verse with Rakim. I can see me just waiting for Rakim to go up next and I'm just like, uh, so you know, I, that's, that, that would be like a dream come true. And uh, J. Electronica, of course. If I got a chance, like if I got a chance to do a collaboration with Rakim and J. Electronica, I'm good in the rap game completely at that point. So, you know, those would be the, like my all-time favorites. Originally, I was born in Hattiesburg, but I don't necessarily claim Hattiesburg because I didn't grow up there. I grew, grew up here in Mississippi. Like I moved here when I was about six years old. So, but I have like I have one best friend from Hattiesburg who I still talk to today. So, you know. Oh well, I would have to give that to my dad because he's the one who's you know prevalent in the hip hop music genre and everything. He, the first aspect of, of music I actually had was in my father's house. Me and him used to play uh, crisscross all the time when we were when I was a kid. So, you know, that's something we used to do a lot. But I really I really started to fall in love with it when I realized the effect that it has on the human psyche and normal human behavior. Like once I learned that once I learned that one, your uh, person's mind actually vibrates to a certain frequency that can be meshed in with the music that they're listening to. Right. I kinda found a different respect for it. One and then two, I actually looked at what type of what type of messages you can actually put in music, and then I also analyze the messages that are put, being put in today's music, and I realize, okay, one, everything that exists has a certain rhythmical pattern. Two, if you can put something, if you can put anything inside of a song to get someone to do it, then you can actually control a lot of a person's everyday life just based right. off of that. So you know, once I put those components together, I actually learned that okay, music is a lot more powerful than what people think, and it kind of it kind of resonated with inside myself to a certain degree. So, oh well, I mean, as a black man, it's it's very important. One because we all know that everyone's genetics can be traced back to one particular female from Africa, and two. Now more than any, Africa has been the most colonized country, continent within the entire world. You see what I'm saying? And for me to one as a black person who's living in the hellish, hellish system of America to disregard that, it would be it would be one it would be saying to myself that I'm I'm de denying a fact. Uh, I would, it would, to me it would be saying that I'm denying part of myself, and then two, it would be saying that I don't really care about the history that I had before I was actually taken over here and forced to think the way I do. Um, I think it's more so important to, for black people in the entire, not just the nation, but the entire world to realize that 
one, as a people as a whole, we're under siege, which is quite obvious today if you're just not, unless you're just under a rock and not choosing not to pay attention to it. And then two, we actually have more power from a world spectrum than we actually believe, than we believe that we do. So, you know, to, to deny the fact that Africa is, is one of the breadbaskets of the entire planet would, to me, symbolize a level of uh, naivete. So, okay. You know, Africa is real. Shouts out to all my brothers and sisters in Africa. I I you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. With me, it gave like growing up with a father like that, it gave me the ability to see past all the illusions that they put in music. That was one thing I did learn. And then two, it kind of made me a little angry because I sat back and looked at how like I'm 14, 15 years old, and I have one prior knowledge as to what these rappers are like in their day-to-day -day life, what they rap about, and how they got to be that, simply because of the access that I had. And also I'm looking at the fact that the music that these people are producing are, in fact, are, are psychologically affecting the same kids that I'm going to school with on a day-to-day -day basis. The people I hear talking about, I remember back when Jeezy, T.I., and all them were hot. Like I remember before, before the whole trap rap was really big, I sat back and looked at all the kids who, one, didn't want to do that, but saw that all the chicks wanted the dudes who was the who wanted the dope boy or whatever. Right. So they would listen to the music and then apply everything that they learned from that to their everyday life. And then I sat there and watched these children throw their lives away se several times over just off of what they heard. And then, too, the older I became, I realized that the nature in which they were doing it was just simply done to monetize it, basically to make to make music off of it, to make money off of it. You know what I'm saying? Right, to capitalize on our pain. Yeah, and then that's when I realized, okay, this hip-hop game is a lot more messed up than I thought. But one of the things, that, one of the, also one of the reasons why I chose to particularly use this genre is because I wanted to show two things. One, originally we put this music together to get a message out to the masses so that people can wake up. And then two, I'm trying to get people to realize that the people who started this art form are going to be the ones who can finish it and put it back to where it is. Because all too often do we get our music or our art forms taken and then spent into something that really isn't. So, you know, I, I, that's why I decided to go ahead and show these people in this decade that we did this then and we can still do it the way we supposed to, the way it was originally intended. But, you know, we got a bunch of kids out here nowadays that's just... Just doing it. Just doing it just because they don't know nothing about it. So, you know. Intelligent movement, KRS said it the best. Um, and generally, generally hip hop to me means breaking out of the confinements of what a normal person would think or what a person thinks is normal. Hip hop is the direct opposite of anything that is conformed into a four corner screen. It's like, I guess hip hop would be defining the space between the vibrations of everything in reality if that makes any sense. The minute you know it's completely, completely desensitized of all its art, when it becomes a repetitive cycle, when it's the same, when it's the same subject, same format, and when it's more of the same thing. And when it gets to the point to where anything outside of that or is different, from that isn't accepted that's how you know it's been completely homogenized because one of the essence one of the core essences of hip-hop is originality spontaneity and contributing something new to it like that's how it was all put together like when you would get when you would get uh, uh four fives and you <clears throat> would put them together you're actually pulling something from the old and making it new not doing the same thing that you heard someone else say or biting as they say so, you know the day that it's the day it gets to that point that's how you know it's no longer hip-hop it's just when McDonald's or the whatever corporation runs the music. Right, it industry. loses integrity. Yeah, when it loses in integrity, man. So, you know, that's that's basically when it's when it's kaputski. So five years from now, um, that's a good question. Uh at this point I probably would have had the fiftieth issue to my comic book, God of Kings. Right here. Okay. Um uh, issue number fifty. Um as far as the rap career, I'm pretty, more, I'm more than likely sure that people would know me for lyricism, but the comic book will be that much more bigger. Um, probably opening up uh, an art school down here in Mississippi to teach children how to how to form their own 
type of you know art thing not necessarily not necessarily in the in the realms of painting drawing or or uh you know the basic generalities but just art in its essence as far as pure human cre- uh, expression right that's right. the type of thing i kind of want to teach children to 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 be more self-expressive as opposed to uh conforming you know what conforming saying? to the, what society has already said you're supposed yeah. to be that's yeah, cool exactly. i dig that exactly. i dig that Free your mind, protect your mind, cultivate your mind. It's your mind, of course. So, you know, no one else should have to do that for you. Um, go to God of Kings Braxton on Instagram, Kwame Braxton, K W A M E B R A X T O N on Facebook. Um, you can also find me on uh, Twitter. It's uh, Mind of Spook at Twitter.com, uh, K-W-A-M-E dot K-B graphics dot Wix dot com. Um, anywhere else, you just send me a link and I can just show you where more stuff is. So, you know, that's where you can find me. All right. All right, Spook. Mm-hmm. If there's nothing else you want to say, man, we want to appreciate you right, for signing up with Speak Your Peace TV. And, uh, love to see you. Nothing ever really changed. It just stayed the same and looked different after it was changed.